the faith. Amen. They walked out. They walked out here with the Bible. Sixty-four more came, came to be counseled about Christ, and wound up they were being saved, and, and they got their lives straightened out with the Lord, and they went out to home, serving the whole church. And then there were just twenty-nine that had, had uh, that needed other counsel, and, and uh, so there were a lot of people counseled, and uh, each each judgment house has a different. It seems like it has a different thing it ministers to people. But uh, the, the greatest manifestation of, of all is the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, is salvation. And uh, we need to understand that today. What's the theme of the book of Acts? I'm starting in chapter 3 today. Uh, Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down, the saved went out, and the lost came in. Everything that we did during judgment house time, those eight days and two and a half weeks, however long we served, it, it, I tell you what, it seemed like a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, uh, it, you know, those, everything, it, it all goes with the book of Acts. Amen. Jesus went up. He ascended up. He sent back the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And if you've showed up today and you haven't been been here, I've done preached through the first two chapters, which catapults the rest of the book of Acts. And I, we're, we're living through, we're living today out of, we're living today the book of Acts. Amen. And that won't end until Jesus comes back again, and that that's when the church age will end. Right, what, not right now we are in the church age, and God hasn't changed His mind on how He wants things done, and it all needs to be about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And uh, if, you'll, if you'll turn with me today in Acts chapter 3, I'm going to preach 11 verses today, and I'm going to stop. And, uh, but I got a lot I want to say, amen? I got five things I want to talk about that, that should be very important to all of our lives. Now remember, we don't have services tonight, and we're not getting liberal, I'll just tell you. As a matter of fact, y'all are some of the hardest working people I've ever seen in my life. And you need to go home and rest. Because you're going to go to work tomorrow. A lot of people out today because they're sick, but they grounded out during judgment. They just grounded out. And uh, they, they, they worked it because it was important to them. And uh, anyway, y'all pray for them that couldn't be here today. But uh, <clears throat> as we look into the Word of God in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple of our prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms for them that entered into the temple. And who, seeing Peter and, and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fashioned his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold... Have I none? But such as I give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, entered uh, with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking, praising God, and they knew that it was he which set it on for the, at, at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement, and, and that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man was healed, Peter and John and all the people ran together unto him in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Let's pray today. Lord, we come to you. We come to you today, Lord, because... Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you being crucified. Lord, it's all about you being put in a barred tomb. And Lord, it's all about you resurrecting on the third day all of what you said you would do. And Lord, you stayed here another 40 days. Lord, showing yourself, showing yourself alive after your death. And Lord, seen by all your disciples, all, all these that would become apostles and some 500 people at one time. Lord, saw you, and Lord, that you ascended up to the Father on the Mount of Olives in and, 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 and Acts chapter 1, which you said you would do. And Lord, that you're coming back again one day in the same place that you went up, in the same matter that you went up, you're going to come down. And Lord, that you're going to be on the eastern side of the gate, and Lord, on the Mount of Olives, when you show up again, 
And Lord, you rapture out your great church, the people that are born again by God's grace today. And Lord, I pray for some here today that don't know you as Savior. Lord, would you knock on their heart's door today? And Lord, would you reveal their lostness and their separation from you? And Lord, would you, would you extend your hand of love towards them, help them to sense your love and your grace pulling them, pulling them into that great salvation? Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit that you'll do your work today. Lord, I want to get out of your way. I just want to preach your word. But I want to preach your word that's satisfactory to you. I want to preach it with, with your power, your hand of power resting upon your word today. So, Lord, help me not to say anything carnal, but help me to not only to walk in the Spirit today, but preach in the Spirit today. And, Lord, as, as, as you do your work today, I pray that you'll encourage your people. Be with the David Lamb family, Lord, on, the, on his passing today. I pray for a special blessing upon him, upon that family today, Chris and Linda, as they go through that. Be with Sharon today as she ministers to them. But, Lord, we, we just call upon your great name today. There's, there's people here today that needs your encouragement. And I pray that when they leave today, it would be like David said in the Psalms, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. So, Lord, we come to you just needing you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down, the saved went out, and the lost came in. You know, you, you'll notice the picture of the church in the first two chapters. As a matter of fact, as it culminates down to the day of Pentecost, right, right on the day of Pentecost, you know, the, 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 abi the abiding Holy Spirit went to the indwelling Holy Spirit that day. And it indwells believers, so we have the Spirit of God. You know, it confounds the wise that God would do a work out here that only he could get glorified for. Because God, they, you know, it, it's not supposed to a work out here on the middle of a, a, of a road on the side of a cattle hill. It's just not supposed to happen because all of them say location, location, location. I say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what I say today. Give him a hand. Amen. Amen. I tell you, he can build a church and he don't need any, he, he don't need, he don't need all the accolades. He don't need all, all he don't, you know, there's certain people that think, hey, they need me out there because I can really help those folks. Listen, we can probably help you. If you can get that, 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 that prideful attitude out of your way. God will do a work in your life today that will just bring great honor and glory to him. And that's what it's all about today is bringing great honor and glory to him. Amen. Let me give you five things to think about as we look into the Word of God. As a matter of fact, when you, when you look through our text today and you, you go back to last week and you pick up verses 41 through 47, you see the picture of how God designed the church and, how, and, and we're the church body, amen? And, and, uh, and those that are, have the Holy Spirit of God, we're the church, amen? Do you understand that today? This is the church house. And Jesus was, was very fond of the church house. He called it his father's house. And he said, he said, my father's house is going to be a house of prayer. Amen. And he told him that you've made it into a den of thieves. We want to stay away from the den. We want to go with Jesus today. Amen. And I want you to see in, in verses, uh, in chapter 2 and verse 41, and they glad, gladly received the word, were baptized. And the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. You know, when the, after you go past verse 37 and 38, of our text, you can see how God formed that church because he told them, now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart, verse 37. And Peter said unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were cut to the heart. That's, where, that's what God does. He goes to the heart of man, amen? You can try to change things yourself, but you're going to need Jesus to change you. I'll just go ahead and tell you. And it says in verse 38, and Peter said unto them, repent. That means turn from your sin. Turn away from sin and turn to Jesus and be baptized, every one of you, for or because of the remission of sin. See, when you repent, there's a remission of sins that's headed your way. That remission comes from his great blood. Amen, Ephesians 1, 7. 
And, that, and when you receive that great remission, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And all these that, that, that came to Christ that day, he said, for the promises unto you and your children and all them that are far off, that's the Gentiles, that's us, as many of our Lord shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, he said, save yourselves. He said, be saved from this untoward or this perverse generation. I can tell you, this generation in the day and age in which we live, it's perverse. And I can tell you today, there's only one person to pull you out of that, and his name's Jesus today. And he said to those that gladly received his word were baptized the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. You see the picture of the church and God adding to the church. Why? Because Jesus went out, the Holy, he sent the Holy Spirit back, the saved went out, and the lost came in. And when you look at verse 42, and they continue steadfastly, see, that's the hardest thing, is keeping people focused on, on the task at hand and what Jesus wants us to be today and where he wants us to head today. It, it's it's an uphill battle unless the power of the Holy Spirit's in it. He said, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship, the koinonia, and the breaking of bread and prayers. And here it is, fear fell upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that, all that believed were together, and they had all things common. They were all in unity, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them and gave them to every man. Why? They, they left their covetousness behind. And they used that money, for, they used those wealth, they used their land or whatever it was for the benefit of others. Boy, that's a lost art today. I tell you, because everybody thinks it's about I, it's about me, it's about nothing but me and me only, and that's all that matters. But I tell you, it's the flip side of who Jesus is. He said it's about serving others, it's about loving others, it's about ministering to others, and it's about others. There's people here not here today because nobody's checked on them in the last two months, but they haven't checked up and went out the front door and got in their vehicle and came to church to be in the fellowship either. Amen. See, they don't know what the church is all about. They think the church is a place that they, hey, it's all about their needs, but it's all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'll just tell you. Now, he'll meet your needs, but I'm going to tell you, he's, he's, he's built the church where we can be a church body, and he's the head of it, and he wants to, to go out into the highways and byways of life and bring the lost in. That's right. We're to be a witness every day, not just on Sunday. We're a witness every day. And people, ought, our lives ought to reflect ought to reflect who, who Jesus is. It ought to be, we ought to be Jesus' shoe letter. That don't mean going around being holier than thou. That means meeting people's needs. Amen. I'm having a great time. But in verse one today, I want you to see the first point. There's the prayer time. And that's where I, I can tell you prayer is the most valuable asset you have. Matter of fact, in verse one it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple. On the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. See, Jewish time started at 6 a.m. And the ninth hour would be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The Jews prayed three times a day, and this time there would be a, a crowd in the temple by then at 3 o'clock. They could pray in other places as they oftentimes did, but most Orthodox Jews, if they could make it, if they could get there, they loved to pray in the temple and they went to the temple to pray. In Psalms 55, 17, the psalmist writes, evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud and he, and he shall hear my voice. Prayer. I want to tell you something. You cannot replace prayer in the church. You cannot replace prayer prayer in, in your Christian hey listen nothing can replace par, prayer in a Christian's life Adrian Rogers one of my greatest I, my greatest hero of the faith he's already passed on but he's still preaching the word of God on TV amen podcasts and everything else he's forgotten more than most preachers ever know he said prayer is the greatest Christian privilege that's the greatest privilege God gave you because he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit to make intercession for us that sometimes we don't know how to pray. And he said prayer is the greatest Christian service. Most times we try to either get, a, get somebody's opinion on Facebook or we just try to go handle it ourselves. That, that's where people get in trouble. And he also says prayer is the greatest Christian failure. People just don't pray. 
And I tell you, I, I got a little bit under conviction about this because I've been running so hard I hadn't been praying like I normally do. Now, you don't have to be on your knees to pray, but it helps. <laughs> I just go ahead and tell you, it helps to have that time. I pray going down the road. I pray before I go in a hospital room. I pray before I answer a phone call sometimes. I pray, I'm praying continuously, but I, there's times I just want to get on my knees and I want to get on my face. You know, we're in a battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Have you figured that out? And, and the only thing that's going to fight that is the power of prayer. And Peter, here's Peter and John. They walk into the temple in a time of prayer. And I can tell you, they're in, in the infancy of this, of this church in, in the second or third year, when I, I was praying. I was minding my own business one day, praying and seeking the Lord and drawing near to him as he drew near to me. And I asked him, Lord, Lord, what, what, is keeping, what is keeping you from building your church like you want to? What, what, do I, what do I need? How do I need to lead your people? He told me to do two things. He said, build your prayer rooms and build your discipleship, Sunday schools. Well, buddy, I tell you what, hey, I went to work. I went to work by preaching the word and all that. Felt, listen, God miraculously went from six people in, in prayer band up to 40 people. And I'm going to tell you something, things changed because God, the power of the Holy Spirit was in and, and, he, 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 and we encouraged people to get involved in Sunday school and the, te and the teachers got serious about teaching and, and, and they, they got serious about Jesus Christ and Him crucified and God built the Sunday school. But listen, He's not done. We just got started. I'm 65 and I'm just getting started. God don't quit. People quit. And, and, it's, and I want you to see, I want you to know today that we the, the, the battle we get, we fight, is against the world, it's against the flesh, and it's against the devil. It's not your, your, your family. It's not a, a former friend. It is the enemy. Number two today. I'm a little fired up. I want to talk to you today about a divine appointment for the lame man. See, we all got divine appointments. Just a lot of them don't receive it. Look down with me in verse 2 today. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms of them that entered into the temple. See, there was nine gates that led into the court of the Gentiles and to the temple itself. Scholars are not all agreed, but the beautiful gate was probably the eastern gate. I got about four pictures I'm going to show you this morning when I was in Israel. I sat on the steps of the eastern gate, and there was a reason. That eastern gate led, that eastern gate led into the court, of the court of the women. It was made of bronze. The gate looked like gold, and it, and it certainly was a choice place for a lame man to beg. And this big, this beggar, he was lame from birth. But, I, but while we were there, our tour guide, her name was Erit, she told us that this is most likely the gate. It's believed that this is most likely the gate that Jesus would have come in through because that's where the common people came, into that gate. Y'all got my pictures up there? I want to show it to you. There's Cindy over on the far right. That's me. I'm all red. <laughs> That's Corey Whitten and my right-hand man. And then I forgot the other guy's name. There he is. We were all sitting up there. That's it. See, it's set behind it. It looks like that gate's been, been, it's been plugged up. It has. But those are the steps right there. See those steps? Those were steps Jesus would have went up. Guess what I did? <laughs> I was running up and down them, amen. I had to step on somewhere where he stepped. Show him another one. See, see, see how it goes up? See, see, the, see how that works? One more. I think I got one more. There's me and Corey. We're talking about the scripture. I might have been sitting right there where Jesus stepped. He might have sat right there. You know, I wonder if that old beggar was sitting right there. Huh. 
Anyway, y'all with me say amen. amen. Number three today. I just got five. Peter and John are being led by the Holy Spirit. That's important. I have a, I think a lot of times we think we're being led by the Spirit by some of the things we say to people, but I don't think they're led by the Spirit sometimes. Amen? Amen. That word led means being controlled. Look down with me in verse 3 today. Who's seeing Peter and John. Let me go back to verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's wounds was carried, and they laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. And ask, for, and, and ask alms or money of them to enter into the temple, who seeing Peter and John go, go into the temple, and he asked them for alms. Look at that. Look, 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 notice that. In verse 4, and Peter fastened his eyes upon, uh, upon him with John, said, Look on us. Now here's Peter, here's Peter and John. They're walking up the steps, and they see, they see this lame man, and he and they look at him, and 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 he said, he said, Fastening his eyes upon him with Peter and John, he said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Now here Peter and John are walking in the Spirit. Amen? They're just walking in the Spirit. They're going, they're going to the time of prayer. And, and the resurrection before, 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 well, before Jesus died on the cross, before he was buried, before he was resurrected, they, they, him and the other disciples, Peter and John and all the rest of the disciples at that time, they argued on who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Would you say it was wrong attitude? They were not humble. Now here they are, here they are, in humbleness, they are they are empowered by the Holy Spirit to give witness unto this one that needed witnessing to. You know, you can't witness unless you're walking in the Spirit. It's hard to witness, isn't it, if you're not walking in the Spirit? It's hard to chew somebody out on the Purchase Parkway and give them a cussing fit and then go up there and try to lead somebody to the Lord. It's hard to do. Matter of fact, it's not on your mind. Amen. I mean, when you, when, you, when you have to have a big old cussing fit, that's, that's walking in the carnal. When you're praying for those, that's walking in the Spirit. And doing what God, what God tells us to do, that's walking in the Spirit. And in Acts chapter 1-8, it t he told them, he said, Jesus said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Of the earth. See, See, we are to be witnesses. Do you understand that today? Do you understand there's a segment of people today that, that just, they, all they want to do, listen, I just want to go to church on Sunday morning. I just want to do that. I, I, my, my kids, they kind of need, I need to get them in church too. And I just want to, I just want to go this far. I just want to come to church and then I just kind of want to be left alone and just let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me do what I do and I just kind of leave and that's kind of the end. Of, uh, all they want is a little dab of do you, kind of like dippity do. A lot of you don't know what dippity do is. But the world is full of that. Okay? And, and, and what Jesus calls us to do is be his disciples. That's a whole different realm. He says, unless you leave, unless you love me more than you love your mother and father, you can't, my, you can't be my disciple. Oh, that's pretty tough, ain't it? He said, unless you hate your brother more than me, you can't be my disciple. And see, we, we use the word hate in a different way. He's talking about unless you love them less, if you don't love me the most, you can't be my disciple. And he said, follow me. Boy, that, puts a, that kind of draws a line in the sand, don't it? Woo! That does away with, with Jesus just being a fan. See, he wants to be Lord. Amen. See, we got it all in our mind. We just, we just want to be a fan. But he wants to be Lord of our life. He wants everything to revolve around him. 
Why? He's creator. He's God. He's God of the universe. And he sent himself back in the Holy Spirit where he, where, where he could dwell with man, where, where man could be shoe leather out in the lost and dying world. Amen? Are y'all with me this morning? You know, Peter, Peter and John had been with Jesus for three years. They were together as, beforehand. They were, they were together as fishing partners in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. They prepared the, the last Passover meal for Jesus in Luke chapter 22, verse 8. They ran the tomb. They, they, they ran into the tomb at the first Easter morning when Jesus resurrected in John 20, verses 3 and 4. And they ministered to the Samaritans who believed on Jesus Christ. Fast forward in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 8, verse 14. And now they were, they were controlled by the Holy Spirit and they were not competing anymore. They were working together. See the picture? You know, a church of unity, a church of unity is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Do you understand that today? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul writes, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. All things without murmuring and disputing. You know, it's like Dr. David Jeremiah said this morning, people are going to talk about you anyway. Why don't you give them something good to talk about? I thought, I wish I'd have thought of that. But when we, we murmur and dispute, we're not, we're not, you, you got to realize what we're doing. We're not murmuring and disputing against somebody. We're murmuring and disputing against a, 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 the church. We're, we're murmuring and disputing against the Lord. Hello? In Exodus chapter 16 and, and, and verse in verse 8, I'm going to go over there right quick, and, and it says this, if I could get, get over there quick enough. At chapter 16, verse 8, and Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. They were wandering in the wilderness. He was going to feed them. In the morning, bread to full. He's, he's going to feed them in the morning. For, the, for that the Lord hearing your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. See, when we murmur, it's against the Lord. Hello? How come it's got so quiet? In Revelation chapter 21, in verse 9, it says this. It says, And there came unto, and to, it came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride the lamb's wife. Who's the bride? Who's the lamb's wife? The church. So when we murmur and complain against somebody, we are murmuring and complaining against the Lord and his church that he died for. He's the head of and we're the body. Do you understand that today? You know, very seldom somebody can say something good about you. Hello? It's usually negative, isn't it? But I want you to know you're you're being negative towards God's church. You think he's happy with that? Anybody home? Let me, get, let me hurry up and give you a fourth thing because I can tell some of you fixing to leave. Just hang on. It's going to get good. Now here it is, number four. Peter meets the lame man's greatest need. What's the, great, greatest, what's the greatest need of this lame man? Some of you are thinking, well, he wants to walk. Well, let's look at that. In verse 6, and it says this, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Y'all see that today? The lame man's greatest need was not alms or money. What the lame man needed was not going to be purchased by money. The greatest void in this man's life was not going to be filled by passerby people. 
The filler of the void that Peter gave this man was a name. And the name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the greatest name. Matter of fact, in, in, in Luke 4.18, 4, it says, Jesus came for the sick. When you look at this, Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby they must be saved. There's only one name, and that's Jesus today. Let me, let me say this. I want you to listen to me. Y'all listening? Say amen. amen. You cannot spend enough money or time on the outside to fix the darkness and the problem on the inside. You can't take enough oxycodone. You can't drink enough bourbon. You can't, have an, you, you can't watch enough porno. You, you, you cannot be angry enough. Some of you get so mad that you throw the F word around just like it's another word, like, like the word the. Let me tell you what, there's only one thing that Jesus wants to do is come and heal your heart today. See, what, what's in the heart's going to come out the mouth. And those desires are going to multiply that comes out of the heart of the needs that you try to fill it. There's only one way it's going to be filled today. And that's through a name. It's through a person. And his name is Jesus today. Amen? Oh, I know you don't believe that. I know you'd love to believe it. And you say, oh, I believe that preacher. But you know what? You just don't believe it. If he would, then, then if you did, then he would be Lord of your life. You wouldn't be the fan. I mean, we got a lot of fans. Fans change teams a lot of times too, don't they? But when he's Lord, it's all different. Amen? You know, old Nathaniel, Jesus came on the scene and, and his brother Philip, he, he, he encountered Jesus and he, he went to his brother Nathaniel and said, Hey, Nathaniel, we found the, we found the ma Messiah. It's Jesus from Nazareth. He said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, Come and see. <laughs> Jesus rolled up, said, you're, than, you're Nathaniel, of whom there's no craftiness in you. He said, How do you know me? He said, I know. I saw you under the fig tree. He said, my Lord and my God. What do you think he was thinking under that fig tree? Well, there was a buzz going around that the Messiah was there, and he's thinking, Lord, he probably said this. I don't know. Lord, if, it, it, if that's the Messiah, I need to know that for sure it's the Messiah. He rose up. I knew you under the fig tree. He knows what you're thinking now. He knows, what I'm he knows what I'm going to say next. I don't, but he does. There's not anything you can camouflage from him. I mean, I got this white shirt on today. I mean, I, I kind of look like a preacher, don't I? But it's right in here that God looks at. I guess I, I told somebody the other day, I wish I didn't have so much passion because I have slammed my hand so many times right here. It's, it's still numb. I mean, you would think I'd catch on to that. I'm going to start going left-handed. <laughs> Amen? I get passionate about Jesus. You know why? When he came in, I had a little brat in me. He kind of went, <clears throat> And I started reading the Word of God, started praying, started giving me, he, I, I knew how to fight that brat. Amen? I took the gloves off. I got Jesus now. Amen? Y'all ever had to fight the flesh? Some of you are lying. I got Jesus in my heart now. All red don't go there. You fix it, get into something you don't want to get into. Yes, sir. Go this way. Jesus. Before, it was like, I didn't have that. Right. See, if it was of the world, I was gravitating to it, but I was undercover. I was like that secret agent man. 
We had two of them last night at the wedding. <laughs> they had sunglasses on, and one of them coming up like a pistol. He's, gonna, he's guarding the rings, and the other one's coming up through there. They had the sunglasses on, and it, was, it had that secret agent man song on. You know what I'm talking about? Dun, 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 dun. That's what some of you are. You just put glasses on, and you play the part. When Jesus come in, you don't have to play act no more. You can just be, hey, you don't have to do no more, no more performing. That's a good day. You can perform for a lot of years, but it's going to finally come shipwrecked. You are. It's going to come shipwrecked, especially when you get up in the 80s. You know, have you noticed that the filter comes off their mouth when they get about 80? They just come out and say it. Have y'all noticed that? I'm like, oh, don't say it. But silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give it to you. Rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Isn't that what he said? Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us we're going to be a new creation in Christ. Revelation 21, 5, it says, it says, and he that sat upon the throne, behold, he says, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these things are words that are true and faithful. And you get down to verse 7 today of our text in Acts 3, 7, and he took him by the right hand, took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankles and his bones received strength. You see, you see how that's a picture of salvation. See that? What happened? Verse 1, the saved went out. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The laws come in. Amen? Now watch. Y'all with me? Let me give you the fifth thing today. It's, it's good. The new man praised God. I tell you, there's going to be some praise in your heart. There's going to be some worship in your heart for Jesus when he comes in. Amen? Now, y'all with me? In Acts chapter 3 and verse 8, and he, talking about the crippled man, leaping up, stood and walked and entered in with them. Where did he go? He didn't turn around and go to the, he didn't turn around and go home. He didn't turn around and go to the local bootlegger's house. He didn't go down there on, 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 on 4th Street and get him some low tabs. He went into the temple. He, and he, he stood up, walked, and entered them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Can you see him? Come, hey, hey, you're, you're, good, you're, good, you're good John. You're, you're a good lame man. No, you're, you're, you're Peter, you're John. <laughs> now, don't notice this. That's Peter, that's John. Took him by the right hand. So give me your right hand. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. <laughs> woo! 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 He goes in the temple. Woo! Woo! First Pentecostal. Woo! 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 I'm bad to costal. We ain't recording this, are we? <laughs> woo! Woo! Oh, Kayla. Kayla Smith, she, she come in that decision room one time and, and, and at, during judgment house, and then they took, she raised her hand to me and said, come in the counseling room in here. And, and, some, and she come out, and I said, hey, Kayla. She goes, oh, Brother Keith, I got saved. Woo! 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 You know what we said? Shh. I'm thinking, that don't sound right. I mean, we got these thin walls called plastic. Woo! Woo! 
Can you see them? Some of you ain't even excited about Jesus saving anybody. Because you ain't been saved. Everybody say, hey, when I see a good conversion, I'm like, mm. <laughs> You ever try to crank a Harley without an without a electric start? <clears throat> I see somebody get saved. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Amen? Don't y'all go tell nobody I preach like this. <laughs> They're trying to figure out why you're coming here. Walking and leaping and praising God. Now watch. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew who he was. And they knew that he, it was he which set in alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement and, and that which would happen to him. Now watch. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John. Now I want you to get a good picture. Peter and John, y'all get back up here. <laughs> get right here. Here, John. Here, Peter. I see why you outrun Peter now to the to the sepulchre, you're smaller. <laughs> they get him up. Don't y'all turn. Y'all stay. He gets up. He's, whoo! Now he's like this. <laughs> whoo! Whoo! Here they people are wondering. They're looking at him like, he goes, hey, Amen. See how important the body is? What if the body didn't go to the temple and pray? He'd be sitting there still begging. Winds up, he's, it's a good day. Amen? Some of you have been saved by God's grace and God delivered you and there was a day a lot like that, but now you've, you've let all them circumstances get you down. Like circumstances aren't supposed to happen to you after you're saved. They will. That song said, I prayed for your circumstances to change. Well, what God wants to do is change us in our circumstances. You understand that today? I tell you, the last three years have been pretty tough. You don't know it because I don't talk about it. There's times I wondered. Lord, I, I think you're done with me. But you know what I did? He wouldn't change anything, so I just kept doing what I do. Getting in the Word, prayer, being around all the, the body of Christ. Say, I need the body. You need the body. You ever been hugged by Marie Brooks? You ain't been hugged till you've been hugged by her. She'll squeeze the devil right out of you. <laughs> the next time you inhale, your Jesus comes right in because she's full of it. Amen? You need the body. Amen? We need the body. I need the body. You need the body. Now, let me just go ahead and tell you. God didn't change this beggar's circumstances at the gate. He changed him in his circumstances. You understand that? Do you know that I never very seldom or ever on the mountaintop? Most of the time I'm in the valley. I kind of live there. And you're thinking, I need very encouraging. No, it's not so bad. You know, I know who's got my back. I come in, God ain't gave me a couple of tools and that's a loud mouth and a smile. <laughs> Amen? Take that, Satan. I'd kick him out of here, but I'm afraid I'd fall. 
Let me tell you something. God ain't mad at you. I want you to know God loves you. Amen. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But fear not, I've overcome the world. You keep praying. You keep praying for your daughter. You keep praying for your dad. You keep praying for your brother. You keep praying for your sister. You keep praying for your granddad. You keep praying for your friends. One day, Jesus is going to come by. He said, give me your right hand. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen? And you're going to think, golly, I can't believe you saved him. I'm just going to go ahead and get it out. Daniel Few, we prayed for you for eight years. I don't know where you're at. You're in here somewhere. I praise God for you. God saved him from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. He did. I look around. I look around and I see other people God saved. We're still praying for some of you. We can't give up praying. You can't wall her down in your circumstance. God wants to change your heart. The outside is just window dressing. He wants to change the inside store. Amen? When God changed my heart, everything else changed. Don't have an easy road, but it's a glorious road. It's a joyous. You know when I'm the most joyous? When I'm preaching. You know why I'm most joyous? When I'm knocking on somebody's door and I'm fixing to give them some information about the church. You know when I'm most joyous? When somebody really, hey, they, I know that they're lost and I need to go visit them. That gives me joy. You know what else gives me joy? A 69 Dodge Charger. <laughs> A tractor. Bird hunting. Deer hunting. Y'all don't, listen, a national holiday's coming up in two weeks. Don't y'all get sick or die. It's deer season. <laughs> See, God lets you enjoy his creation. I may not have those things, but I enjoy them. I enjoy creation. I enjoy him. I enjoy being out there alone. I, you know, I take my Bible with me. Y'all believe that? Read. Tell the Lord how much I love him. Tell him how beautiful everything is. Praise him. How about you today? Is there praise in your heart? It's because something's crowded out. Maybe he needs to come in. I don't know. Daniel, we didn't pray for you to get saved. We just prayed for God to do a grace in your heart. We didn't know what you needed. Amen? There's other people we're praying for. I always remind them in the prayer room, let's go pray at 520 Sunday night. And in the prayer room, we always raise up those that God needs to do a work of grace in their heart. Amen? Why don't you let God be Lord of your life today? He's waiting. Metaphorically, you give him your right hand. In the name of Jesus, he'll do a work in your heart that only, only he can do. Amen? Let's pray today. Lord, we 